Let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Welcome. We'll start in whatever is a comfortable enough seated position for you, using any props you like to sit however is comfortable for you. Let your eyes and face begin to relax. Let your legs and seat be heavy. And start to feel your spine lengthening without letting the legs pull back up. So the legs are heavy, spine is tall, shoulder blades softening down. And take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale out the mouth. Two more just like that. And then we'll inhale for one ohm. Oh. Now, before we begin to move, first, Start to tune into awareness. Maybe your awareness is drawn to your breathing. Or the body, physical sensation. Maybe your awareness is drawn towards what's happening in the mind. And perhaps with an inhale, imagine that you are creating space around whatever it is you're noticing, that your awareness is widening, getting more expansive. So there's a little space around everything. Then from this space, if you like a moment for an offering or intention or personal prayer, and go ahead. Let's come standing at the front of the mat. <clears throat> Hands are at heart center. Feet are pretty close to parallel, if not completely parallel. Your feet could be closer together or up to hip width distance apart, however you feel most stable. Anchor down through the feet, lift through the kneecaps, lift through the belly and the sternum. Base of the skull floats upward. Shoulder blades heavy, sitting bones heavy. May all beings everywhere benefit from our practice together today. Om Shanti. On an inhale, reach forward and up overhead and start to move here. So you could have your hands together like I do. You could have your arms out to the side. You could bring your hands to your hips. Whatever works for you and however you like to move.
On your next inhale, press through the feet, reach through the fingers, exhale, bend the knees and fold forward. Uttanasana, let your head go. Find some movement here. Could be shifting your weight from one foot to the other or from the heels to the toes. Maybe it's moving the torso or the head. Just keep noticing, keep creating space for noticing. And then we'll bend the knees until the hands touch the mat. Step the right foot back, low lunge. Lowering the knees, sinking the hips, pulling the chest forward. You can move the head here. You can move the hips. Maybe exhale out the mouth, relaxing the jaw. Then place the hands for plank, curl the right toes, lift the right knee. Try to keep the hips fairly low as we step back to the plank pose. You could, of course, do the plank on the knees as well. Either way is fine. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, engage the belly, float the knees down, pull the elbows back, chest and chin forward and down. And then relax the belly, come all the way onto the mat, untuck the toes. If you like to come on the forearms for the sphinx and bring some movement there, you could. Otherwise, hands under the shoulders, legs together, cobra pose. Either way, some movement is fine, whether that's lifting and lowering, twisting, Moving the head and jaw. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, release. Press the mat away from you. Elbows stay in, downward facing dog. And find some movement here. Shoulder blades sliding away from the spine. Armpits facing one another. Pressing into the thumbs and pointer fingers. And then we'll step the right foot front, left knee down, low lunge. Sink the hips, shoulders back, chest forward. Again, a little movement would be fine or maybe the body stays still and you just tune into your field of awareness. And then we'll step the left foot forward to meet the right, Uttanasana. Bend the knees deeply, fold the chest and belly in towards the thighs. And we'll inhale halfway up to a flat back. Exhale, release all the way down. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Next, we'll move through two more, starting to move a little more quickly, linking the breath with the movement. You can go at your pace. Exhale fully and inhale to lift. Exhale fold. Inhale right foot back. Exhale left foot back. Breathe in, exhale, lower knees, chest and chin, inhaling up, exhaling, press back, inhale, right foot front, 
Exhale, left foot front. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. And again, inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold, use your belly. Inhale, right foot back. Exhale, left foot back. Breathe in. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Inhale, right. Exhale, left. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, fold forward, stay here. Interlace the fingers behind the back and begin to move here. So you might move your hands a little side to side. You might pull them towards your low back, away from your low back. You might move the head a little bit here. And then experiment with moving your shoulder blades. Can you pull them closer to the spine? Notice how that starts to open the chest. And then let them relax. Maybe they slide towards the hips, slide towards the ears. Now you can release your hands for the transition to the lunge, or if your balance is feeling pretty steady, you could keep your hands. So we'll all step the left foot back, lower the left knee down, untuck the toes and lift the upper body. And then if you release the hands, you can reclasp them. Anchor into the right heel and press through your left shin. Press your knuckles down, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift your chest. You could exhale out the mouth here. Little baby twist, bring your knuckles outside your left hip and look over your right shoulder. If that feels okay, you might straighten the arms, bringing your knuckles towards the outside of your left thigh. Keep lifting the sternum and squeezing the shoulder blades together. On the inhale, come back through center. Press down through the knuckles. And then wiggle your fingers apart. Reach back, up, and overhead. Interlacing the fingers, releasing the index fingers for Kali Mudra, and start to move here. So you can move side to side, forward, back, and around. Keep pressing through your right heel and your left shin. See if you can squeeze the elbows towards one another behind your ears. Take a deep breath into your belly. Exhale, float the hands down to heart center and then to the mat. Curl the left toes. Try to keep your hips pretty low. Step back to plank. They may come up a little bit. That's fine. Deep breath in. Exhale, engage the belly to control the lowering of the knees, the chest and chin. And release all the way down. Inhale, lift up, cobra pose. Exhale, press the mat away, straight legs, downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths here. Move however you need. 
Here, our shoulder blades are moving away from the spine, making the armpits sort of face one another. And take the gaze forward towards your hands. Walk our hop front to Uttanasana. Bend the knees, fold in. If you like, hands could come to the backs of the heels. And inhale halfway up, flat back. Exhale, release all the way down. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Close the eyes and feel the breath. What is contained in the field of your awareness? Can you create a little more space around it when you breathe in? Inhale to lift up. Exhale, use your belly, fold forward. Once again, we'll interlace the fingers behind the back. If you like a different stretch in the wrist, turn the palms to face out. And you could bring some movement here. And if the palms are turned out, we'll go ahead and turn them back in for the transition, which once again, you could release your hands forward or you could keep them clasped. We'll step the right foot back, lowering the right knee, untucking the toes, hands clasped at the low back, press through the knuckles, lift the chest. Here, we're anchoring in the left heel and the right shin. So your right shin may not touch the mat. There's still some space between your shin and the mat, but that downward pressure helps stabilize through the sacrum. Squeezing the shoulder blades together, lifting the chest. Stretching and breathing into the belly. And then a little twist to the left. So bring the knuckles outside the right hip and look over the left shoulder. If you like, you can start to straighten the arms so the knuckles come outside the thigh. On an inhale, come back through center. Press down through your knuckles. And then wiggle the fingers apart, reach back up Overhead, monkey pose, second side. And find some movement here. Continuing to anchor in the left heel and the right shin. Deep breath in, lift your ribs, stretch your belly. Exhale, hands come down to heart center, then to the mat, and stepping back to plank. Breathe in. Exhale, lower knees, chest and chin. Inhaling up, sphinx or cobra. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here. You might like to lift and lower the tailbone like we do in cat-cow. But keep the shoulder blades sliding around the outsides of the ribcage. If you would like, you can lift your right leg up for a down dog split and find some movement. Try to keep those shoulders stable. And then switch sides. Moving and opening as you like. And then we'll switch again. Inhale, reach long through your right toes. 
Exhale, engage your belly, pull the right foot all the way front, left heel down, push through the feet to come up for warrior one. As always, you could start and or stay with your hands at heart center. If you like to lift the arms overhead, that's fine. The shoulder blades pull down the back. Those feet anchor down. Steady the breath. Take a deep breath in, lengthen the spine. Exhale, open out, warrior two. Make sure the front knee doesn't roll in. Shoulder blades down, gazing out over the front fingers. Now from here, keep the legs, release the arms down. Interlace the fingers behind the back again. Inhale, press the knuckles down, lift the chest. Exhale, come forward inside the front leg. Try not to rest on the right thigh. You can bring a deeper bend into your right knee. And if the shoulders allow, you could let your hands come towards the floor behind your head. See if you can make space in your field of awareness for whatever is. Deep breath in. Exhale, stay low. Push into your right foot. Turn your toes, standing straddle. Prasarita Padottanasana. And as you're ready, you can release your hands down and find a little bit of movement here. And then let's walk the hands to the front of the mat. Step back, plank pose. Place the right hand in the center of the mat under the face. You have the option to drop your right knee down, plant the left foot, left arm lifts for gate pose. Or if Vashistasana is accessible for you, right leg long, left foot back behind. Either pose, shoulder blades are starting to squeeze towards the spine. Glutes engage to send the hips forward and up. You can move your left arm. You can move your head. Good, on an exhale, engage the belly. Flow back through to the plank pose. Left hand, center of the mat. You could drop the left knee down for the gate pose or left leg long, right foot behind, Vashistasana. Shoulder blades moving down and in towards the spine. Lifting the hips, stretching the belly. And then exhale, use the belly to float back through, plank pose. Deep inhale, exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale up, sphinx cobra or upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. You might exhale out the mouth. Continuing to move. Let's lift the left leg up. Moving here. Keeping those shoulder blades sliding away from the spine. And then switch legs. Keep sinking your chest towards your thigh. And then we'll switch again. Inhale, reach. 
Exhale, use the belly to pull that left foot forward. Right heel down, warrior one. Whatever variation you like with your arms. If you tend to get lightheaded, stay with the hands at heart center. If you like to lift the arms overhead, either with palm shoulder width or together, go ahead. Slow everything down. If your concentration is zeroing in on something, see if an inhale can help you create some space around it. And then on an exhale, we'll open out to warrior two. Now keeping the legs, release the arms down, interlace the fingers. Inhale, press down through the knuckles, lift the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Exhale, come forward inside the front leg. You can let your arms come overhead, you can let your head go. Eventually, this lifetime or one, three down the road maybe, Crown of the head comes to the mat. So that's where we're maybe moving towards, even just energetically. Now keep the hands, stay low, deep breath in. Exhale, push into your left foot, straighten the leg, turn the toes, Prasarita Padottanasana. And then you can release your hands down and find some movement here. That could be shifting your hips side to side. It could be bending one knee and then the other. It could be a wide-legged downward facing dog with the hands walking forward. About two more breaths here. And then we'll walk the hands around to the front of the mat. Step back, plank pose. Push through the heels, lift through the kneecaps, lift the sternum up and forward. Deep inhale, exhale, lower the knees and then sink your hips back, extended child's pose. You could have palms facing down or up, or you could bring the hands to prayer, thumbs to the back of the neck. Let's walk the hands in and lift the upper body and we'll come standing on the knees. So if that is a little tender for you, you can double up your mat a little bit for a little extra padding underneath the knees. The knees are hip width distance apart and we start with the toes tucked under, moving towards Ustrasana or camel pose. I will cue you through and think of it like the bus ride, right? You get off at whatever your stop is and you hang out there and that's perfect. So starting, hands at heart center. Think about your knees anchoring downward. Sitting bones anchoring downward. So we start to feel a stretch in the quads. Lift the sternum up to meet the thumbs. Pull the shoulders back and down. Start engaging the glutes. Send the hips forward. So you could work right here. You could bring the hands to the hips, fingers curling around the waist, thumbs pointing towards the spine. 
and start really rolling the shoulders back and down. Shoulder blades squeezing towards the spine. And then continuing to engage the glutes, sending the hips forward, stretching the belly and chest. You could stay here, you could back out, or you could reach one hand back for the same side heel. And then alternate. Maybe both hands come back. Don't let your hips go back. Keep sending your hips forward, forward, forward. Keep lifting the sternum up. Keep pulling your shoulder blades back and down and towards the spine. Chest is opening. If your neck is healthy and it would feel okay for you to let your head drop back, you could do that, but you certainly do not have to. Two more breaths. Breathe into all that space in the front of your body. Now to break the pose, first bring hands to hips, then engage the abdominals to come out of the back bend. Keep the abdominals engaged, let the hips go back, and slowly find your way back to an extended child's pose. You might like to take your knees a little wider. Take your time. Anything you like with the hands. And if you'd like a traditional child's pose, arms down beside you, that would be fine also. You might rock a little bit side to side, rolling across your forehead. About two more breaths here. And then we'll really reach the arms way forward, forward to the front of the mat, press into the fingertips, pull the chest forward, come all the way out to the belly. You could do a sphinx, a cobra, or upward facing dog if the back is feeling warm but not strained. Wherever you are, take a deep breath into the belly. Exhale, engage the belly, lift the hips, downward facing dog. You can take your feet a little wider, if you like, than your hips. Give some movement and space to the low back. And then step the right foot forward, left knee down, untuck the toes, you could stay low or come up anywhere along the way to the Kapyasana. Maybe notice if this Kapyasana feels different than the first one. Think about squeezing the pinky edges of your palms together. And then we'll float the hands down to the mat. Step back to plank. You could go straight to down dog or flow through knees, chest, and chin. Inhaling up and exhaling back, downward facing dog. Exhale. Left foot front, low lunge or up to monkey pose. There's a little feline interference there. She likes to sneak off camera right before you would come up so that she's like, what, I didn't do anything. And then we'll float the hands down all the way to the mat. Step the right foot forward, Uttanasana. Bend your knees. Let your chest and belly come in contact with your thighs. Imagine your spine, especially the low back, decompressing with gravity. Mm -hmm. 
Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, right ball down. On an inhale, all the way up. Push through your feet, use your glutes. And exhale, hands back to heart center. We'll do a brief single leg standing balance pose. So if you like to stand next to a wall for that, go ahead. We'll work in the dancer pose preparation. So just to continue with that back bending, shift your weight over to your left foot. Right hand can either come to a strap around your right ankle or directly to the outside of the ankle. Now first, bring your knees in line with one another. Then raise your tailbone down and the right knee down. Lift your chest. Now you may feel this is an intense stretch in the quad or hip flexors, and if you like to stay there, that's fine. Or you could extend your left arm forward and start to push your right foot back, keeping the chest lifted. Steady your breath. Shoulder blades are squeezing in towards the spine. And then on an exhale, use your belly to stabilize you as you break the pose. Let that go. Other side, standing on the right foot. Left hand comes to a strap or to the outside of the ankle. Start with that quad stretch, bringing the knees together, tailbone heavy, chest lifts. And again, you could stay here or Extend front to back, lift the sternum, breathe into your belly. Try to use your whole right foot to hold you, not just gripping in the toes. And on an exhale, use the abdominals to stabilize as we break the pose. And let that go. Let's come on down to the mat. And you may take any child's pose you like. You could prop it up with a block under your forehead or blanket between your thighs and calves. You could come onto the crown of the head for the rabbit pose. Or if you have a headstand practice, you could go ahead and come onto the head for that. All right, go ahead. About two more full breath cycles here. And then if you are on the crown of the head, either in rabbit or headstand, let that go and come back to an extended or traditional child's pose. Maybe you take the knees a little wider to give the low back some more room. And if you feel like your awareness has zoomed into a thought pattern or a physical sensation, that's okay. But maybe with an inhale, you create some space around it. Identify more and more with the awareness as opposed to what's within the awareness. As 
as you're ready, let's lift the upper body and release the legs. From here, we'll come either into a shoulder stand or if you prefer a bridge pose, or of course, legs up the wall is absolutely an option as well. Remembering not to turn your head to one side or the other in either the bridge or the shoulder stand. And if you're coming in a shoulder stand, make sure you've got room behind you for the plow. And if you want to bridge with a block, that would be a great option as well. Wherever you are, the chest is softening open. There's a little bit of upper back engagement to pull the shoulder blades together. If you're in bridge and you don't have a block underneath your sacrum, you could release, come down and rest. If you're in shoulder stand, you could, without turning your head, either bend your knees in towards your forehead or extend the legs long, reaching the toes towards the floor behind you for the plow pose. Now, if you like, you could keep your hands at the low back for that extra bit of support or you could release your hands down flat to the mat behind you. You could interlace your fingers like we've done in several poses today. Or if your toes are comfortably on the mat or floor, you could reach your arms up overhead towards your feet. About two more breaths here. Now, without using your neck, we'll start to roll down vertebra by vertebra. Think about using those vertical abdominal muscles as your brakes. And then once your hips touch, let's bend the knees. Hug them in for just a couple breaths. Maybe you rock a little side to side. And then release your feet down. Release your legs long if you need to wiggle so you're all the way on your mat, that's fine. Preparing for fish pose. So wiggle your arms underneath your body, palms face down. Bring the legs close together and extend it out long. Point the toes. On an inhale, press into your elbows and hips to lift your chest up and then drop your head back. Maybe the crown of the head comes to the mat. Engage your shoulder blades towards the spine. So you've got some opening across the chest, but then we've got internal rotation in the thighs. We're not letting our knees roll out. Knees point towards the ceiling. Stretching the throat. One more inhale here. Exhale, push into the elbows, release your head. Release your hands. Three breath, instant Shavasana. Everything totally relaxed. All right, that was three breaths. We're not done yet. Place your feet flat on the mat. And try to have your feet hip width distance apart and pointing straight ahead. So if you're not really sure, you could pick up your head and peer around a little bit. Arms come down the side, 
Wiggle your shoulder blades together a little bit. Inhale. Exhale, push into your feet, squeeze your glutes, lift your hips up, bridge pose. The knees are in line with hips, so they're not flopping out, they're not touching one another. Press into your heels, reach the hips upward. Remember when we were doing camel pose, this is very similar, just in a different configuration. If you'd like to interlace your fingers underneath your back and wiggle your elbows together, you can. We've got about three more breaths here. Back of the neck is long, chest moves towards the chin. One more inhale, squeeze and lift. Exhale, use your abdominals to control your descent downward. Once the hips touch, hug your knees in. We are done with our back bending. Roll around a little bit on the low back. Let's place the left foot down, hug the right knee in towards the chest. So you could catch the front of the shin or the back of the thigh. Let your shoulders melt open. And you could experiment with the left leg extending down to the floor, but if that causes any pinching in your low back, just bend the knee and place the foot flat again. You might exhale out the mouth. And then let's switch. Place the right foot down. Hug the left knee in. Placing the hands wherever works for you. Shoulders and chest softening it open. You could have the right knee bent or the leg extended. Eyes starting to sink back into the skull. And then place the left foot down. You could have both feet flat on the mat for our reclining twist, and I recommend that if the low back is feeling a little tender. Otherwise, if you like, you could cross your right ankle over your left knee in a figure four shape, or stack your knees, or take the eagle legs. Arms can extend out to the sides if you have room. Inhale tall, or excuse me, inhale long. Exhale, let your legs go left and your head Turn right. Try to feel gravity taking over. With your next exhalation, engage the belly button down towards the spine, bring your knees up through center. If your legs are crossed, you'll switch. And then we'll let our legs go right, head turn left. Once again, if you like, exhale out the mouth. And then, once again, engaging the belly, bringing the knees up through center. We'll prepare for Shavasana. So 
If you want to hug your knees in again, if you want to do the happy baby pose, if you want to fetch a blanket or your socks, do whatever you need to, to prepare for some rest. <clears throat> If the low back is feeling tender or pinchy when you lie down, you might try a pillow or a blanket rolled up underneath the knees. You can have your hands resting on the torso or down alongside the body with the palms up. Take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale out the mouth. And relax the feet. Relax the ankles and legs. Relax the glutes, hips, and belly. Relax the lower back. Relax the entire spine. Decompressing and softening. Relax the shoulder blades, ribs and chest. Collarbones and shoulders. arms, wrists and hands. Relax the neck and throat. The jaw and tongue. Face and eyes. Eyelids and eyebrows. And the space between the eyebrows. Relax the forehead and scalp. and leave the body by itself.
keeping the eyes closed. Slowly begin to find your way back to the body. Feeling your breath. Maybe bringing some movement to the fingers and toes. And if you would like, you can stay right where you are. But if you would like, you could find your way back up to a seated position. And see if you can come back to that place of awareness. Spacious awareness where you can notice the thoughts and the senses and the body. Regarding all of them kindly. As we go through our day-to-day -day life, it can sometimes feel like life is something that's happening to us. But the awareness practices, and they are practices, a little bit every day, can help us step back and get a little perspective and notice whether what's happening is in alignment with our goals and our intention. These are practices we can carry with us off the mat. Let's conclude with the Om Shanti 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 together for peace. Inhale. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May all beings everywhere be free and happy, and may we be receptive to the grace that surrounds us. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Om Shanti. As always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or feedback, concerns. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.